What's up guys, it's Teppo here. Do you guys remember last week when I showed you guys that our snow is melting? Well, look at this. Our snow is practically gone. For someone who lives in a cold country and when winter lasts four months of the year, you guys don't even understand how good it feels when the winter finally ends and spring's on its way. Even though today's a little bit of a foggy day and it's raining, I don't even care because that means the snow is just gonna melt even faster and that we can enjoy spring and summer. This past week has been amazing with its weather. It's been every day like 15 degrees. I've been going outside, bike riding. I've been a maniac. I rode one day 30 kilometers, the next day 20 kilometers, the next day 45 kilometers, and again yesterday 25 kilometers. For those of you guys in America, I have no clue how much that is in miles, but let's just say it's a lot. It's a little bit chilly still, so let's go back inside. I forgot to mention one thing. We set up our backyard patio ready for the summer barbecues. I'm a little bit proud of it, so I wanna show you guys. There's our backyard patio set. And look at this. We got them hipster lights up there. I'm not really a handyman, so I'm proud of this. I put the hooks up for these guys. And best of all, we got the barbecue. So as you can see, I'm pretty stoked for the summer to come because it's gonna be a whole lot of barbecue in my backyard, hanging outside. You guys don't even know, finished summer is unbelievable. It's just constant golden hour. The sun never goes down. It's perfect. If you have a chance, come over to Finland. I'll take you out for a ride. Last week I released seven steps to make a cinematic film. It was more of a little teaser for you guys and this week we're gonna go through the full workflow on how to make a cinematic film. I really hope that this will get you guys just to understand the behind the scenes of what goes into making a cinematic film, whether you're making a travel film or just a short film or whatever kind of projects you're working on. These seven steps are gonna help you to get that cinematic look to your footage and to your videos. All right, let's get into the workflow on how to make a cinematic film. It's always cool to see the behind the scenes of everything that goes into making a cinematic film, whether it's a travel film or a short film or whatever project you're doing. And firstly, one of the most important things, it's a little bit boring, is that you make sure that you're super organized. I used to be so unorganized when it came to my films and I would just over time lose footage or get lost with certain things and it just wasn't working for me. So I decided I gotta figure out how to organize my footage and my projects well. So this is how I do my organization. Here I have uh, four folders, I have footage, music, project, and renders. So here I put all the footage from the video, here I put any music that I'm going to use, my Adobe Premiere project or any After Effects projects, and here I put all the renders from the videos. And doing this, it helps me just to keep everything organized. I know where everything is, and I can easily just go back to it even months later when I look at the project again. So make sure whenever you start your film, make sure you're very organized. So now we're just gonna go to Premiere and I'm just gonna bring in the footage. And this is footage that I filmed from my artist profile of Josh. Uh, we just got this really cinematic looking footage from a coffee shop in Sydney, Australia. Uh, I filmed it in 60 frames per second. So here it is, the footage, and you see it's 59.94 frames per second. And the best way to get slow motion is to simply right click, modify, interpret footage, and then go assume this rate as 23.976. Now it's going to be already slowed down perfectly by 50% and now we can just make a sequence by dragging the footage here and I'm just going to bring the rest of the footage over. Like that. So step number one in order to get cinematic films is to film your footage with a flat profile. Now every camera has different kinds of flat profiles and as well you can make custom profiles that are going to get you flat footage. And basically what filming with a flat profile means is that you're gonna have just a blank canvas for your footage. Because if you're using a standard profile or any other profile on your camera, 
it's essentially gonna have already a filter placed on the footage. And then when you start color grading, it's just gonna get messy and you're not gonna have the control that you want in order to get it the direction that you want. But when you film with a flat profile, not only are you gonna get more dynamic range in your footage, but as well, you're gonna have more flexibility to go into a certain direction with your color grade. So step number one for getting your cinematic film, film with a flat picture profile. So here we have Josh. Uh, we have these shots of him in the cafe, going to the cafe. We have shots of him ordering his coffee. And here's a shot of him just mixing his coffee and so on. And as you can see, all these different shots are filmed with the Cine D flat picture profile on the GH5. Uh, I found that this is a really good flat picture profile and it's giving me the look that I need for my color grading. Step number two in order to make that cinematic film is to apply a LUT for your color grade. Now, LUTs are basically like presets for video and it's gonna give you that base for your color grade. Uh, just recently, I released my own very first Cine LUT pack. If you haven't had a chance yet, check that out. I'll make sure to link that below. It's only going for $20 and it gives you seven LUTs that's gonna get you that cinematic look for your footage. But what I'm gonna do here in the Premiere is I'm gonna go open up the color tab, it's already open, and I'm gonna click the first clip and I'm gonna go over here to the Creative tab. And here you can click Look, and then you can browse. I'm gonna go find my LUTs, Digital Merch folder, and here. And one LUT that I'm gonna use for this video is the Cine Blue. I really like this. It's kinda of got this blue tint with really nice yellow skin. But obviously when you apply a LUT, it's gonna be at 100% intensity. So I would lower it down to maybe, let's try first 40. 60, okay, I like 60. And then from there, I can just make some small tweaks, maybe adjust the white balance a little bit, add some more warmth to it. I'm gonna go back to 20, let's see. I like 20, and then I'm gonna just add some more contrast. All right, great. Already we see the before and after just by simply clicking here and there using the LUTs. So LUTs are a great way to get that base look, and then all you gotta do is just change the white balance, change the exposure a little bit, add contrast, you can play with the highlights and the shadows to even increase more contrast to the video. But simple tweaks are gonna get you that color grade that's gonna get you that cinematic look for your films. So if you haven't tried LUTs yet, go and check out my shop, $20. It's not a lot of, to pay to support this channel and to help you out in your own filmmaking process. All right, so step number two in order to make that cinematic film is slow motion. Slow motion just gets you that epicness for your films and Cameras nowadays are people filming such high frame rates. You know, the GH5, Canon 1DX, a lot of the cameras are able to film 120 frames per second or even higher. And even some of the lower end cameras, they can still film 60 frames per second and you can make it down to 24 frames per second. So cameras are really capable of doing great slow motion and that gets you that nice cinematic look for your footage. But there's a certain way in order to get the best slow motion possible. And I mentioned it before, it's simply just modifying your footage from 60 frames to 23.976 frames or 24 frames per second. But this is what a lot of people do. So a lot of people, they go to the Adobe Premiere, they just right click and go speed duration and they write a certain amount, like 50%. And it's okay, but for some reason, it just doesn't come as smooth as it does when you do it this way, where you go to the footage, go modify, interpret footage, and then Instead of doing use this frame rate as 59.94, go to assume this rate and then put 23.976 or 24 frames per second. That's gonna get you that cinematic look for your footage. It's an easy step in the process in order to get that cinematic look for your footage, but just look at the footage when you're looking at it in slow-mo. It just looks so smooth, so clean, and just so nice. There's another shot of Josh just waiting for his coffee, drinking that coffee. So by adding slow motion to your films, it's gonna get you that nice cinematic feel. So try it out, use this method in order to get slow motion. Step number four in order to make a cinematic film is adding crop bars. You might have heard the cine bars, anamorphic crop bars, whatever you call it. It's basically the black bars on the top and bottom of your footage. And there's a lot of ways to do it, but the most simple way is just downloading a PNG file and just importing it and putting it on top of your footage. So here I'm gonna go, I'm gonna search for crop lines. There you go, it's just a PNG, import that, put on top of the footage, and now I've got the crop bars. 
And a little tip for you guys is a way that you can actually kind of cheat by using these crop bars is that if your shot wasn't perfectly composed or you want to hide something from the footage, you can actually change the position of your footage afterwards. So for example, in this shot, obviously I want more of Josh to show and you can just lift them up. Make sure you don't go too high because then I'll go above the crop bars. But there you go. So I'm able to take some of the top part off and show more of Josh in the footage by using the crop bars. Another way you can do these crop bars is using the crop effect in Adobe Premiere. And some guys, you see in Peter McKinnon, for example, his videos, you see the crop bars kind of zoom in slowly. Well, this is using the crop effect. So you can find the crop here, you click it on the footage. So you can go on the top and add maybe 15% and on the bottom add 15%. And if you want it to zoom in, all you gotta do is go to the start of your video and just go, you just gotta add keyframe and Go start at zero and maybe go five frames ahead and then go 15 and 15. You go to the start, you can see the crop bars come in. So that's a cool way if you want to kind of just introduce the crop bars. You can use the crop effect to bring them in like that. So that's step number four in order to get cinematic look. Step number five is to add grain. Now this is one of those things that it's up to you. It's kind of your taste. For some projects, I really like adding the grain and some projects I don't at all. But the grain that I like to use is the Gorilla Grain. And I just go here and import the Gorilla Grain. It comes in a folder with different kinds of grain. You got the medium clean, fine clean, coarse clean, medium dirty hair, dirt flicker. It just gets crazier and crazier. But you know, I could add this coarse muddy hair dirt. This is pretty intense, but it can import this. You put on top of the footage, you go effects and overlay. Obviously for this, then you need to put the crop bars on top and I'm gonna just take off the crop from before. But this just gives this nice grain look for the footage. If you want more of a filmic look for your footage, you can add grain. And also, if you don't like the intensity of the grain, you can always just go down and change the opacity to 50%, for example, or whatever suits the footage. So, so step number five in order to get the cinematic look is add cine grain. And there's a lot of companies that give out this grains. I think Gorilla Grain is one of the best, but feel free to look around and see what works best for you. Step number six is stabilize the footage. There's nothing worse than seeing the micro shakes or just shaky footage all over the place, unless you're really trying to achieve that look in some sort of horror film or that kind of feel. But it's so easy nowadays to stabilize your footage. So many cameras like the GH5 or the Sony's, they come with their own built-in stabilizer which really helps. Or you can use glide cams or steady cams or gimbals in order to get that steady look. But if you don't have the equipment, you also can just use the warp stabilizer effect in Adobe Premiere. It does wonders, it does dreams. So I filmed this shot of Josh um, in Australia during his artist profile. It's already pretty smooth because it's filmed with the GH5 and has a built-in stabilizer, but if I wanted to get it even more smoother, all I gotta do is go into Premiere and find Warp Stabilizer. So I go to Effects, right, Warp, Warp Stabilizer over here, drag it onto the footage, okay? And then I go from Effects and I can, a lot of times I'll put it down to 10% just because I find it just gets too crazy. And sometimes you gotta be careful that if, if it's certain footage, it might start going really wobbly and crazy and that just means that Premiere can't really stabilize it. But for the most times, Premiere is really great at stabilizing it. So I'm just gonna let it run its course. Can't wait, can't wait for a faster computer. Still waiting for the stabilizer to do its thing. It's a pretty heavy effect, so I guess it's gotta give it some time. Alright, 89%, 90%, 90, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 93%. We're on the home stretch! Guys, rendering all stuff is killing me. Stabilizing. All right, hokey smokes, here it is. So now you can see it's just 
Now we gotta go and render it because it's just so slow. All right, now the footage is ready to be watched. My computer's a little bit slow, so I gotta render it out because it's 4K and I'm doing stabilizer and all the effects. But here, now you can see afterwards with the warp stabilizer, it's just super smooth and looks great. So if you don't have all the fancy gimbals or steady cams, just by being smooth with your hands and filming your camera and then adding warp stabilizer at the end, it's gonna get you that stabilized footage to get you that cinematic look for your films. So try those tips out. That's step number six. And step number seven is get a cinematic song. I would usually find my song first, but for some reason I put it as last, maybe it's because last is the most important. But finding the right song for your project is so crucial. And I often find that it's the part of the whole process that I just try to rush through quickly. I guess I'm just so excited and so ready just to start editing, but I don't want to take the time to find the right song. But finding the right song for your project is so crucial because it's going to make or break it in a lot of ways. And for me, I love to find my music through Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is this licensing site where you only pay, I think it's 15 or $20 per month, and you can download as many songs that you need for YouTube. So it's great for us YouTubers, vloggers. Make sure you check it out. I'm gonna link that below as well. It's a great place to find cheap, high quality music. And so I'm gonna go to Google Chrome, and I already have opened here Epidemic Sound, but if you wanna see, I can show you from the start. Epidemic Sound, login. Um, you can browse through here. There's albums, sound effects is great as well for when you're making videos because a lot of times you just want those sound effects. So I'm gonna go browse and I'm gonna choose film just to get that filmic. And let's try this first song. I like it, it's got that synth feel, really cinematic feel. So let's download this. And then I'm gonna import it into Premiere. YouTube channel, seven steps to cinematic. I got music, it's not here yet. Oh, it's here. So I'm gonna put this cinematic music here, throw it into the video. All right guys, give me 10 minutes. I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna show you how seven steps can get you to get that cinematic look to your films. So that's the final product. As you can see, with a few small steps, you can really get that cinematic look to your films. Hopefully this was helpful. If you really like this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be putting out videos every week. And um, yeah, I hope that this helps you in the filmmaking process. You know guys, life's too short. Make sure you go and explore. There's so many things to see in this world, so many things to do. So make sure you really live life to the fullest. See you guys next week.